Hello there and welcome to this third video of this playlist of ancient uh, ancient civilizations versus Rome in my gameplay where I'll try and talk about not only my decisions but as I try and do it from an archaeological and historical point of view of why these decisions are being kind of made in the realm of possibility that we know. So as your last let off, we, we met the Greeks in our last uh, towards the end of our last video and we've now seen that Egypt has now got two settlers and starting to come this way and we should move our scout out the way. We also didn't finish the Great Baths which was here, that was finished by Alexander in Pella over there. But we're just moving our settler over here um, to start coming up and I foresee a war with Alexander as we're crouching towards his borders trying to make sure our capital is defensible. So we'll end this turn and on to the next one. We'll accept Greece's uh, declaration. Rome has always had an interesting link with Greece through the centuries, actually before Rome became a major power. Um, they share a lot of mythology, cultural traits, um, and lots of other stuff as well as links. You know, Rome foresays that their origin comes from the Trojan War as for fleeing Troy. So they, but they also share Olympic Games, similar uh, faith as I've just said. So it's a lot of interest. So we'll take their declaration of uh, their delegation and accept their money, but we won't. We won't give any back, but what we'll do is we'll we'll have a look around their territory. Maybe heal up our almost dead scouts. So we have a unit to move. Let's move this scout because it's going to pest that scout's just going to annoy Alexandria. We have another uh, a settler being built in Roma. Without craftsmanship, inspiration is a mere reed shaken in the wind. So craftsmanship is quite an interesting uh, concept. It links into making pottery, but also material goods, which starts to come about. And craftsmanship is a usefulness of trading, uh, as if you're able to make good items, you can trade along the world. In this case, craftsmanship only gives us a bit more into building builders, as well as learning how to make, let's say, the weapons for our soldiers. So we'll, we'll, we won't change our policies just yet. But we will go for military tradition, considering that we could be going to war with Alexander very soon once we plant our city here. Meliadanum, which is modern day Milan. And what we'll do here is we'll instantly go for building a warrior. Because we want to have as many units as possible to defend ourselves. So nice. our little scout is still scouting about, which is quite useful. What I think I might do is send this scout up here and check this place out. Because we can have this scout doing the southern region here. This scout is eventually going towards India and having a look at their territory over there. The interesting thing about Alexander is he he likes women civs, but also, well, women leaders of civilizations, but likes people going to war. And if you're not at war, he's kind of not very happy with that, since he is a warlike person. So we'll we'll let him ramble on and let him be his contentness. And we found a tribal village down here, which is quite good. We're moving this scout across here. Writing means sharing. It's part of the human condition to want to share things. Thoughts, ideas, opinions. This quote is quite useful. Uh, it's quite right. Writing is a system that can be used. But actually, what seems to be more likely the passing of thoughts, ideas, and opinions has not been writing. It's been through trade. It's been through communications. You know, as a trader goes from one city to another, he's not only taking goods, but the ideas, the culture from that set people. So it's interesting that they use this quote for writing. I wouldn't say this is quite factual in a sense. I think writing is the, the start of putting a, a more cementing your idea across towards your own culture, but not necessarily the spread of ideas. 
So we're looking at the next bit, what would we choose? Irrigation seems to be a more logical option or archaeology where we start to look at uh, founding religions and we start to, this is the period of religion. We could also go for archery, although I would say archery would be already founded by this point with the fermenting of semi-nomadic uh, lifestyle because we do have evidence of Neolithic hunting boats. So it's quite interesting. So what we'll probably go for is we'll go for irrigation and we can start using, uh, not only will it improve our harvesting of bananas, which we have some, uh, none in our borders, but we can use the irrigation as that would be the logical choice afterwards. So we've got our scout going through Zanzibar and he's now found the Indian territory. So I feel like we've got some mountain ranges here as a good defensible place against uh, India, which is going to be useful. We'll send this scout over here. There's some diamonds, which is quite a nice luxury resource. So we've ended our turn. Uh, we're moving the settler up here to kind of box uh, Macedon away from us as much as possible. Uh, you can see that India have just had a flood in Badarab, Bad, Bad Aupa. I believe. I'm terribly sorry about butchering the name, so if anyone is offended by that, I do apologise. <laughs> so as you can, uh, but the way this, again, one of the mods that I'm using sets up is it has the language to what your Civ is playing, or the, the language that the Civ would, uh, the other Civ would use. So this is the Greek saying for Alexandria and Helenopolis. This would be the Indian names for their various capitals, and obviously the Latin names for ours. Um, as well as the Latin names for the city-states that know. So this is a city-state that has the Latin name, this is the original name, the original name, the original name. So we're moving our scouts up here. We've now found our little tribal village. It's given us some money, fantastic. And what we'll go for is forest the woods. So we're able to move quicker along these areas. as we're waiting for our turn we've had another bit for our historic timeline and we've also helped towards early empire which is about helping us start to expand our, our needs our, our territory by putting more cities down so we found some nice tin over here we'll run you through this area let's run through India's territory before we get kicked out when they discover writing and the open borders start to come about. So we can we move this scout? If we can, so we found Athens is really nicely defended in a little mountain range here. And they've built another settler, so who knows where they're going, but we'll try and run around as much as we can. Our warrior's been attacked by barbarians, but lucky enough our warrior is strong enough against theirs, and what we'll, we'll do is we'll just keep on walking that way. So we found this bit, and then this is the capital of India. Who aren't happy with us, but they're not against us, they're not mad. So we see Athens seems to be on this own little peninsula connecting, so it's got Lake Coptis. And now we've ventured out before, maybe we might get trapped there, who knows. We found another tribal village in the desert, so fantastic. So we have some random silk over here. And our warrior beaten up the barbarian warrior, so we are safe to move on. So I always advocate whenever you're playing this game, unless you're playing on a, a lower difficulty, never run your settler uh, on its own, running on its own, because it will just, it will get captured by a barbarian. Okay. It appears not to be the scar of a meteorite, but a deeply eroded dome with a rainbow-inspired color scheme. So we've just found a natural wonder of the Eye of Sahara, as well as the Great Sand Sea, apparently. So we can see that we... I don't underrate the value of military knowledge, but if men make war in slavish obedience to rules, they will fail. 
So what we can do is, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change our double experience for recon and start to build some military units. You know, an old Venice saying is, uh, in peace, prepare for war. So you're always ready for war. And what we'll do is we'll expand our little borders over here. We're spending some money and we'll move our troop because hopefully now we want to build that military encampment and start to help us out a bit. As well as go for early empire so we can build some more settlers much quicker. So we keep venturing down the Great Sand Sea. Interesting enough, you don't really get penalties for running through here. You get hit by natural disasters like sandstorms, etc. So we're a little bit trapped, but we'll, we'll take a turn to heal ourselves. India is now expanding with its settler and archer. Suppose they paint the proscor and pollen prosemon. So one of Athens' thing is the Delian League, which is a reference to a defensive pact which turned into an empire during the per after the Persian War and then during the Peloponnesian War. So they like being friendly with city states. So if you're not friends with city states or in their sphere of influence, as they say, they tend to be like, yeah, do it if you want, we don't mind. So we've now found our barbarian camp right here is okay by us we've settled here on a hill and now we can use our, our warrior to heal up because as soon as the city gets attacked we'll be okay what we can do is build a campus so do we have any gold to use yes we do so what we can do is we'll use this to build up our campus here and start raking in some some valuable uh, science production while our scout is still scouted down here. This scouty boy is going towards this possible new location for a city. And maybe it would be quite nice to have access to the sea, which would be nice over here. So it's nice advanced planning, which, you know, tends to happen with civilizations of this caliber as they will. So this is in reference to Cleopatra's own trait, where she tends to be allies with strong people. So in this case, she was allied to Julius Caesar, then Mark Antony. So she likes uh, militaristic men with strong uh, armies, which could be us. We don't know. We'll just wait and see. So what we want to do is build our military encampment. So I'm going to place it here, so it's at just in striking distance of a... Uh, Hello and anyone that dares to go against us. So we'll have our warrior just sitting pretty up there. Have our scouts keep scouting around. Ah, oh, this scout can just sit here because now he's trapped because Athens has now done its uh, closed its borders towards us, so we cannot run. And interesting enough, Athens. Uh, Egypt has created this, which is like the Ramesses monument, which is called the Abu Simbal. So it's quite nice that, you know, Egypt actually makes its wonder that is Egyptian. So for Rome, ours, the only major Roman wonder in this would be the Colosseum, which I'm hoping to try and get to build for Rome, but we have to wait quite a while before we get that civic uh, for entertainment purposes. So we'll attack this barbarians camp right out, outside our city, start to whittle them down, have our other scout who's just found this lake, which is nice. So we found the Wakatao River, which seems to go up here. We've still got lots of put unknown land here, definitely unknown land here. And maybe what I might do is start to bring this scout backwards and ask... The man who has grit enough to bring about the afforestation or the irrigation of a country is not less worthy of honour than its conqueror. So this is good, we've now got our irrigation and I think the next thing I'll go for is astrology, that would make sense. Uh, so we'll keep our scout going this way because we know a little bit more about this area but we this is unknown. We'll take this camp from the barbarians, which is lovely. Add some more money into our pocket. Found some nice horses down here. One thing I, I will uh, make reference to is one of the 
side effects of playing on a gigantic map is with the resources that you can play, with the mods that I have which adds more resources to add a bit more uh, um, flexibility in that, uh, more uh, realism sorry not flexibility, is it starts to take out uh, strategic resources which I find is quite a pain so I've been trying to do other methods to try and have all these extra resources while still having maintaining the strong uh, strategic resources however none none has been available so I think in the next playthrough I'll keep every mod except for the extra resources because it's a shame that you can't Look have back over the past resources. with its changing empires that rose and fell and you can foresee the future too. So what we've got is we've now opened borders for people, but we want to build more settlements. We've got enough faith, we've got, I'm quite happy with that. So we'll put our warrior back here and upgrade him as well. And what I tend to go for the first governor is Magnus, because his traits seem to help out. So if we look at Magnus, not only does he help with a uh, 50% yield from plot harvest as well as feature removals of the city but the main thing I like is the provision which means every time you train a settler it does not consume the city populace and then black market which means uh, the cost for discount for units is much much cheaper so we'll find our next city down here as well as train our next warrior and we'll go for state uh, workforce So we found the White Cliffs of Dover, but we can't actually see them. So we'll start to run back down this way and ask Athens very, very kindly to let us go through their territory, maybe with a little gold to uh, sweeten the deal. So as we can see here, we want to have this block, because what I'm hoping to do is we put some mat tracks down. We can have a campus just sitting right here. So where is it? Campus. And then maybe a holy site here and there may be something here as well so we could possibly put a uh, cultural site here because what I'm hoping for is we build Machu Picchu right here and what Machu Picchu does is it adds even more yield bonuses for your your territory so what I also will going to put down is I'm going to put down a where is it Entertain oh, no, entertainment plaza so all of this will be hit by Machu Picchu so this is some advanced planning I'm doing from knowledge of the game Machu Picchu which I believe I spelled wrong but oh, oh well I want uh, is a Inca thing and then we want to put the Colosseum so the Colo Colosseum my spelling is awful, just a wonder. Uh, I'm dyslexic, so my spelling is not brilliant, and same with my pronunciation. But that's what some advanced planning I want to do. This is just me being a gamer, wanting, and that's what I always try and do in my gameplays, is try and do this advanced planning of where I want to put. So he's not happy I have so many few troops, but that will change as we're starting to build up more troops. What we can also do... So we still have this Barbarian, they're attacking our city, but our city should be strong enough to withstand against the uh, the scouts. The many, many, many scouts that are there. Interesting. So our main worry is this, this Spearman, so we take out the Spearman, which we have. Fantastic, and we can start to build up some more XP, destroying these scouts if they keep attacking our city. So we've got our little ones, we've now found some barbarians over here, if you kind of want to avoid them. So what we'll do now is we'll ask for a declaration of friendship, which is great, which makes it a lot easier to make deals. Nice. So we're now accepting over borders, and we'll try and be friendly with everyone, except maybe Alexander, because we know he's going to attack us soon, so I'm... I'll wait because it's rather if you feel there's a grievances penalty on here. So what happens is uh, other nations will be more favourable because people have created grievances towards you. So what we'll do is start running through Athens' uh, Greece or Athens' territory, and hopefully they won't mind that. But we've got open borders with everyone, so that should make everyone a bit more favourable towards us, except for maybe India at the moment, but. 
we can leave India out of the way because they seem to be going through quite tough mountain ranges to get to us, which again suits me fine. I'd, I'd rather not go through, go to war with too many people, although that is what Rome will do. So these scouts are kind of like worthlessly dying. We need to move our, our scout away from these barbarians as quick as we can. Which we will run into the forests and then run up this hill, which is great. We also got from bronze working and mercantilism because we're killing scout, uh, barbarians. Little bits help towards, towards that. So let's scout this way. We found some more gold, which is always lovely. So we'll move this warrior down here to follow our, our settler here. Oh, we found a mountain, so we can go around this way. So we'll run here, and then we'll skip our turn, because I kind of want to go up this way and see what's up that way. One way as a piece of advice, whenever you're playing with Gorgo or Alexander, best thing to do is always go to war with someone miles away from you and just leave it there. Because you don't have to kill anyone, you won't lose any units. And it's actually quite a nice bonus. Our, our, our warrior is not doing very well against one measly scout, but let's just destroy him. And then we can start to heal him up and have no worries of barbarian in the Antu. Let's move our scout this way. Let's move this scout down here. Can we go this way? No, it won't let us. So we'll go this way down. We follow the nice road to Corinth. We have another unit to be moved, so we'll cross over. A physician without a knowledge of astrology has no right to call himself a physician. So this is in reference to Hippocrates, who's considered the father of medicine with the Hippocratic Oath that doctors must, if can, save everyone in their service. So we'll go with uh, masonry, start to build up our walls on our defensiveness. So we've now built our second city, a uh, third city, yeah, of Kum. And what he'll do is we'll... Oh, that's an interesting one. We could go for the Oracle, which I think might be quite nice. So we'll go build our Oracle just here. Uh, we'll heal up our warrior over here. We'll keep scouting up. And we found Kadesh. It's quite nice. And we've met another city-state of San. San? No idea where that is, but they produce food, which is probably the reason why Athens is trading since Athens was always a big city relying on outside trade for its food as we saw in the Peloponnesian War where they just kept importing their food from the Bosporus which is a uh, modern day uh, Byzant uh, Istanbul up in the Turkish as well as in from the Crimea and the one way they, they lost their war was uh, through the help of unfortunately uh, through the help of Persia um, they were able to get round uh, the Spartans were able to build a fleet and block off Athens and start to blockade the port so once your people start to starve then you knew you were going you needed to stop because Athens was the rule of the, the ways while Sparta was the land power but Sparta couldn't siege Athens however that all changed when Sparta started to win on sea, and Athens just couldn't win on that. So we built our second warrior, so we'll move him over here for our next city. So what we'll do is we'll change that to a settler, and then maybe build the hanging gardens here, and then build another settler, and then maybe we could buy our trader a little bit later, or we'll build one. But We'll wait and see. We have some diplomatic favour and a promotion. So 
So what can we see down here? So he wants some diplomatic favour. No, diplomatic favour is always really good to tell people to back off. Or, or when it comes to the World Congress in the medieval period, you can use it to. It is equally help important to have a happy and engaged workforce as it is to have a profitable bottom line. So what we'll go, we don't want anything of this, not for wonders until we get our, our proper state. So we want to go for Vivision because we're going to be spamming settlers from Mighty Roma. But I do want in future planning, so we need to add this. I would like to have my government plaza here. And what government plaza does is that anyone in between nine tiles of the government plaza tends to have expended loyalty towards, towards you. That's what we want. Now we want to go for political philosophy. So around this time, you do, we do kind of see political philosophy, but this is the time where people are, are essentially kingdoms or theocracies. So under the line of uh, priests or kings. But we'll see once I've got political philosophy that actually we get autocracy, which is a guess is to do with early forms of monarchy, oligarchy, which is the rule of elites or nobles and then we have a classical republic which is every man every citizen man has a vote so it's a bit interesting why they choose that because actually you do have kingdomships in this period you know the kingdom of macedon you have for instance the imperium the imperial emperor of rome the, uh, the pharaoh of egypt the various different kings of the <laughs> Ah, kai te whakatata mai koe ki tō te Māori nohonga. Tēnā, ko ai koe. Well, so it's honest to me, you would love to sample your hospitality. So he's interesting for the Māori. They've settled in the snow down here. Be interesting. Interesting choice considering New Zealand is not that barren. So we don't have many amenities, but that's because we're not upgrading our territory. Which is fine by me, I'm not fussed, but we'll build a barracks here. We've got our warrior, so let's send this other warrior up this way. Let's have our scouts start scouting down in the tundra. And we have a scout here for promotion, so let's go with the forest of the woods. Here the dark brown amorphous basalt, there the red ochre. And below that again, the slender but distinct lines of the wood coal. That's quite cool. We've now found another natural wonder, so that's that's lovely. Do we get a promotion for it? No. That's sad. We have some elephants next to the giant causeway. So yeah, that's quite interesting that both the giant's causeway and the white cliffs of Dover are quite close together, like in real life. Interesting on this game that they are. <laughs> Well, I am sad we don't have a natural wonder near us, so it's a bit, a bit sad, but what can you do? So we have some potatoes up here, a little bit of a desert tiled randomly here. So we'll end our turn here. So we need to wait a turn. And we can see they're, they're chasing after the barbarians, which is fine. We do not want to give our diplomatic favour away. No siree. India seems to like us, so what we'll do is we'll have a friendship with them and we'll let them open our borders as a gift because India is also really annoying on this game. As in, they're quite pestilent and they will just keep trying to go for war and destroy you if all means possible. <laughs> so it's nice to have them on our side. So what I will do is I will leave it now. Each of us is carving time. a stone, erecting a column, or cutting a piece of stained glass in the construction of something much bigger than ourselves. So we've now got masonry. So what I'm going to do is for an advanced build is put ancient walls here, as well as some ancient walls here for defensive purposes. And maybe I will push for pyramids to be put right here. Not now. Ugh. So that's sometimes what happens when you uh, 
So you don't really pay attention and you just put down as long as you have that advanced building as that extra bit of planning and now we have enough for our little golden age for when we go into the classical period next thing i want to do is get some bronze working because i want to make those those mighty legionnaires so we'll, we'll wait till the end of this turn and then i will say goodbye until tomorrow for this next video i'm hoping also to do my third video on crusader kings which is a research, uh, a mod using about the Arthurian legacy where I tried to bring them back. So enjoy the rest of your day.